Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M head coach, will be on the SEC teleconference shortly. It is, um, I don't know about expected, but I'm expecting that he will have an update on quarterback Connor Wegman, who, according to multiple reports, could be out for the rest of the season with a foot injury. Now, Texas A&M does have a quality backup in Max Johnson. This is not, you know, the end of Texas A&M's season. Danny, what's the what does the loss of Wegman mean in terms of the way that you're looking at the Aggies' offense? They'll be a little bit more pocket passer centric. You know, I think Wegman clearly was more athletic, but I love this story, and not I'm I'm biased because Brad Johnson is a friend of mine. You know, I'm friends with the family. I don't know Max, but I think he's a more than co- – like this might be one of the best backup situations you could find yourself in in the entire country, and I think it showed in the game on Saturday when you didn't see really any drop-off and you actually saw the offense kind of settle in and he you know played great. So I still like the Aggies in the SEC West to start the season. This doesn't really deter me that much from it. you know. And I think that's one of the advantages – we're getting a fresh face in there is that Petrino has worked with a lot of different styles of quarterbacks too, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he coached Lamar Jackson, he's coached pocket passers. He's kind of done it with a lot of different guys. So yeah, you never want to lose your starter, but if there was ever any team as far as offense coaching and depth, I think this is the team where you're like, all right, let's see what, let's see how it goes. And you're not devastated. Like some schools would be. Yeah. I think Danny nailed it. I mean, it's, it hurts, but they do have one of the best backup situations in the country. Uh, there's a lot of teams in, in the SC West who don't appear to be very competitive this year. So I would expect AM, just based on how they played at Miami um, to and the lack of quality passers in the West this year, uh, to still have one of the better passing games in the SEC, right? Like I, I think Max Johnson is potentially a top half passer in the SEC just because there's so many quarterbacks say, who aren't so- very good. So where, where is – we've gone from Connor Wegman to Max Johnson. Like, does Texas A&M's quarterback still rank better than how many SEC quarterbacks? Well, see, it's interesting to, to parse it out, like quarterback versus passing game. Sure, right? because you've got wide receivers at Texas A&M that are better than wide receivers at a lot of places. Correct, yeah. Uh, it's probably premature to say he's a top-half quarterback. I 100% still believe that A&M is still a top-half passing game in this conference. See, I – I think it's a bigger deal. It's it's nothing about Max Johnson. I think that the one key thing that you know Danny touched on, Wegman is a lot more mobile than Johnson is, and I think if you're a defense, it is a lot harder to game plan for a team that has a quarterback who can move around because you can do everything right, and then that guy just takes off and bang, he picks up a first down. With Johnson, you can prepare a lot differently to stop those wide receivers than you could with Meg Wegman back there because you don't really have to worry about him using his legs to you know kill you and extend drives. Not to say he can't, but he's just not the same kind of threat doing so. So I do think it hurts their ceiling, but you're right. I still think when you look around the SEC, this is probably still going to be you know at least an average passing offense in that league and in that division. So I don't completely rule them out, but I I do think this probably ends all chances of them winning that division. So Texas A&M is going to be playing in Jerry world against Arkansas. These games are nuts. They do not make any sense. They seem to exist on an Island within a season, Texas A&M, a six and a half point favorite in that game. The hogs of course went, just went down to tiger stadium and put a scare into LSU. They needed a field goal with less than 30 seconds left to get out of there. Do you give uh, Arkansas a chance to pull an upset against the now Max Johnson-led Aggies? I, I think the number is good. Um, personally, I'm, I'm not betting the side. If this gets steamed because of, of this injury, I probably will bet some Texas A&M. Texas A&M has not been a trustworthy football program under Jimbo Fisher, to say the least. I still think they should be favored because they have better players than, than Arkansas does and, and probably better coaching overall. Uh, but yeah, I mean, certainly like he is a backup. It, we, we, we all might think it's a minimal drop off, but there's some drop off. There's a reason why the guy won the starting job uh, and it is his first start. So Arkansas has a real D line. Arkansas's DB so far this year have been torched uh, largely by anybody with a pulse. So we'll see how that goes. But honestly, like A&M hasn't really covered anybody either. So <laughs> yeah, they got a shot. Um, and is this Steve Adazio's fault? 
<laughs> sure. Yeah, it's all it does. Because I mean, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the foot injury because an offensive lineman stepped on his foot? Yeah. Yeah. And isn't like, the offensive line coach Steve Adazio? If Jimbo had just run on the field and blocked the offensive lineman from stepping on his foot, <laughs> like ultimately, doesn't it all come back to the head coach? He shows a willingness to try, try no, to no, tackle no, no. Auburn guys. I just want to blame it on Steve Adazio. Just as a matter <laughs> of personal preference, I just thought that this would be an interesting place to place the blame at the feet of Steve Adazio. It is. It's, Do you it's guys know lines. We're supposed to protect the QB, and we hurt the QB. I mean, come on. Do you guys know how often this happens and how bad it hurts when they get you? Oh, oh like, yeah. Especially if you get the offensive lineman that wears the screw-in spikes, which I always couldn't stand. I wanted the molded cleats because they were easier, like if they did step on you. But you know how many like big toes and toenails that I lost? Because once they step on them, like it's done. Forget it. And then you come and you wake up like Sunday morning or Monday morning and you'd see the black and blue nail and you just be like, oh, great. This is going to be fun. And then they have to drill like with a tiny pin. They poke a hole in it, to try to bleed it out. And then it's dry. It is the worst. But I dodged it because I didn't break and break a foot. I didn't break anything. You know, I wasn't out for a season. It was just a pain tolerance thing. So the I remember my, my sophomore year of high school, I had an ingrown toenail on my big toe on my right foot. And I played the entire season with it because to have it removed, I would have had to miss a couple of weeks. But the surgery to get that thing removed and getting like a shot in your toe was one of the most excruciating things I have ever felt because that is nothing but bone, man. It was terrible. Um, chat's informing Mimi that it was an Auburn defensive lineman, not his own offensive lineman okay. who stepped on his toe. So Steve Adazio, yeah. I still He's blame you. Hook. For, they, they no, no, wait, him. He's still on the hook for Colorado <laughs> State, right? For leaving a smoldering ashes of a football program uh, that they're still trying to rebuild there in Fort Collins. Um, all right, another news headline that came out of the week. There was a college football playoff meeting to discuss the future format. Mike Oresco, the American Athletic Conference uh, commissioner, came out and you know made a lot of waves talking about a new 5 plus 7 uh, format instead of a 6 plus 6. That would be the five highest ranked conference champions according to the College Football Playoff Selection Committee plus seven at larges. Uh, it he has clarified this again as of Wednesday morning saying, oh, no, 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 I was I was talking about the, the, the future, you know, like the 2025 deal, because right now we only have two years that we've really been agreed to. Greg Sankey, after the Pac-12 really started getting picked apart, said that they need to review this. Do you think that the college football playoff should or will change from the 6 plus 6, let's say first for the uh, immediate future, beginning next season tom 